I'm going to go over five tenant screening tips that you need to know to avoid crappy tenants. <laughs> the first tenant screening tip you need to know to avoid crappy tenants should go without saying. Any tenant screening video I ever do is probably going to have something about this, and that is not renting to people who have previously been evicted. You would think that this goes without saying. However, that is not the case. Most of us, most landlords, we can tell. If we're screening a tenant, we walk up to Mr. Tenant and they say, hey, man, I didn't pay rent to my last landlord because I didn't fucking feel like it. And I may or may not pay rent to you. Most of us, we understand. Oh, dude, I should not rent to this guy. He's probably a crappy tenant, right? But that's not the end of the story. Oftentimes, those tenants, they'll try to lure in uh, inexperienced landlords into their web, right? Give them the sob story. Like they'll try to be like, "Whoa, where, where, where? Something happened out of my control. I didn't have anything to do with it. I got sick. My car broke down. My kid, this or that, right?" And a lot of landlords they let their guard down. And they try to give them a second chance, right? Or you get all those liberals out there like, people can change. People can change. Give them a chance. Guys, yeah, that's great. Sure, some people could change, okay? But you got to ask yourself, what is your real estate business uh, setting out to accomplish, right? Are you trying to house every person out there who needs a home or are you trying to run a profitable real estate business right if you're trying to house people that's not a business that's a fucking charity and i don't have anything against charity but dude you can't think that these are one and the same they're not if you want to go out there and help those who've had uh, evictions in the past man that's great good for you dude i don't ever want to like hate on you for uh trying to do good in the world but you have to understand that's not a business decision. That, per statistics, does not make you a profitable property manager or real estate investor, right? So you need to separate those two things. The data speaks for itself. I've screened, managed, worked with, housed thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And I will tell you, people who have at least one eviction on their record are of a higher likelihood to being evicted again, right? It's just not a sound decision. So whatever that sob story is, you can't fall for it. You can't rent to them. You even get those folks that battled their previous landlord, and they'll tell you he's a slumlord this, he's a slumlord that. Guys, you got to play the odds. You got to play the numbers here, okay? If that person, I'm not even saying what they're saying is a lie, although it usually is, but let's say it's not a lie. If you go to battle, with a tenant who's familiar with the court system, who's familiar with dragging a landlord through the court system and fighting them out, they're going to be a more formidable foe for you in your legal battle, right? If you're playing the odds, you're playing the numbers, that doesn't make sense for your business. <coughs> the second tenant screening tip I want to give you is do group showings okay group showings are incredibly important what that means is you tell everybody hey the showing's gonna be sunday at 3 p.m let's rock and roll right maybe you got two people three people 10 people 20 people right you don't do individual appointments you want them all to be there at the same time right this is going to do a few things for you number one it's going to create competition which is great right it makes people see that other people might want the unit they're going to be quicker to try to rent that unit from you number two uh it just, dude, I don't know what it is, but these people just don't fucking show up, right? It's, like, very common, dude. We've screened thousands and thousands and thousands of tenants throughout the years. And, uh, dude, for whatever reason, in the property management space, like, screening tenants, it's, it's, like, the craziest thing in the world. Like, we have had leasing agent after leasing agent. Like, they have all experienced this that have worked for Holton Wise. Like, people will be like, yeah, man, uh... I'll go tomorrow at 4 o'clock, and then you call them the day before at, like, 3.20. Like, hey, man, you going to come to the property at 4? I'm going to meet you there. Yeah, no problem, dude. I'm getting in the car right now. And then they just never fucking show up. I, I don't know why this is, but, like, there's, like, a decent chunk of that. Like, it's, it's probably, like, 30% of the people you talk to will totally flake on the leasing agent. I, it's insane to me. I, it, it, you wouldn't think that going into the business. So we learned that the hard way. So take 
uh, you know, my advice and don't waste all your time doing that, right? So not only will it save you that time and effort of that, dealing with all the no-shows, what it does is it will help you wean out those people that are bossy, that want to be the boss, that want everything to be their way, right? You get those type of tenants uh, that just want everything to be how they want it, and they will be very offended uh, that they can't dictate the terms of the appointment, and they have to share their appointment with other people. So this will help you eliminate those. And that's going to lead me right into my third tip, right? The person that you want to avoid. I'm going to elaborate on those bossy people, right? You don't want to rent to bossy people. So when you do your screening and you find that someone is incredibly bossy, you know, alarm bells need to be going off in your head that you don't want to rent to this person, right? We get into real estate investing to make our lives better, to make our lives easier, to create passive income for ourselves and our families. If you get a bossy tenant that tries to set the relationship up, right, right at the very beginning, right, when you're screening these people, you never have as much leverage as that in the relationship. That is the most leverage you'll ever have. That is the pinnacle of the leverage, right, because if you put them in your property, and then six months later, you realize, man, I hate this motherfucker. You can't just call him up like, hey, Bob, I fucking hate you. You have to move on to my property tomorrow, right? It doesn't work that way, okay? So if this person gets into your property and they're making your life miserable, it's going to cost you time, money, and effort to actually get them out of there, right? So when you're screening your tenants at the very beginning, if you get that bad feeling about them, that's when you have to make the decision to cut them. Never try to go for the easy money. If you think they're going to be a bad tenant, if you think they're bossy, you need to get rid of them right then and there. And they'll do things, right? They'll try to dictate the terms of the relationship, right? Like you want to show them, hey, the showing's at 4 o'clock on Sunday. They're like, no, 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 no. That doesn't work for me, dude. We'll do it this time, right? They're trying to you know, create that dominance in the relationship. They're trying to make you feel like you're like their waiter at the local fucking Red Lobster or something, right? That's not how this relationship works, man. A tenant is not even really your customer, folks. You need to realize a tenant is actually more like your employee. If they follow your rules, if they do what you tell them to do, if they follow the procedures you have put in place they will do what they will make you money if they don't you know you set a lease and your lease says you got to pay rent on the first if they don't follow your rules they don't pay your rent what are they doing they're not making you money is that person still your customer no of course not that person is actually actively ruining your business right so you need to treat them more like an employee and you got to set that relationship up right from the beginning Fourth tip, application fees, unit holding fees, right? These are incredibly important. I see so many landlords coming to me like, yo, man, uh, I don't know if I should make them pay this fee or I made them pay the fee, but it was not, it was a refundable deposit, blah, 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 blah. Like, dude, a refundable deposit? What the fuck is a refundable deposit? What in the fuck is the point of a deposit if that motherfucker's refundable, right? You got to make... Then pay a fee to apply, you got to make them pay a fee to hold the unit off the market, right? So many landlords out there, all the tenants, they'll come in, they'll say, yeah, I'm interested in your property, and you get 10 people that are interested in your property. You as a landlord, you got to pay money to the credit screening companies, the background companies, right? That money is coming out of your pocket, right? And if you think all 10 of those people actually qualify for your property you're crazy you need to create some type of barrier right that barrier needs to be money right if you say because you watch this video i don't have i don't rent to anybody with evictions right if there is no fee for that application you're going to get a bunch of people with evictions that are just like crossing their fingers hoping it doesn't show up on their uh background right they're going to you know, hope to God that it doesn't show up because why wouldn't they, right? Why wouldn't they put in the application? It doesn't cost them anything, right? But if you actually put that fee, you're A, going to deter those people who don't qualify from applying and you're going to reduce, right? You're going to reduce the chance of somebody who actually was evicted and somehow it's not properly 
uh, showing up on their report, right? And then they squeeze through and they get into your property. Guys, nothing's perfect in this world. If you guys think that all these credit screening companies are 100% accurate, you're wrong. Nothing's 100% accurate, right? So you're going to reduce that, mitigate that risk, number one. Number two, you're going to save yourself a lot of money. You're going to put that uh, responsibility for them to pay for that application fee on them, right? So you're reducing your tire kickers, reducing those who don't qualify, reducing the chances of those who don't qualify, squeezing through your criteria, right? And you're not going out of pocket to screen all these folks, right? So that's part one of this. And then the second part is after somebody has been approved, okay, you might approve somebody, but they didn't have to pay anything, so they just went to the next guy down the street, and now they want to rent his house, and you're out that money again, right? But if they had to pay for it, they might wait to apply at the next guy's house, okay? So now you've had them pay for it. You like them. You decide, hey, Mr. Tenant, I'm going to go ahead and give you the apartment. Let's say it's January 1st. They're a good quality tenant, so they're not trying to move in until February 1st. Why? Because they're responsible human beings, and they need to give their previous landlord a 30-day notice. And of course, they're not going to give their previous landlord a 30-day notice before they actually find a new house, because anybody who does that's a fucking moron, and you don't want to rent to fucking morons. So now you got 30 days where your apartment's going to sit empty, okay, while you wait for your responsible tenant's uh, previous lease and term with their previous landlord to expire. You can't just be like, cool, man, here's the lease. Talk to you on February 1st when you pay your first month's rent. No. People change their minds all the time. You got to do something to hold them there, and that is you make them pay the holding fee, right? If it's going to be holding the property off the market for 30 days, they need to pay an amount equal to 30 days of rent, right? If it's like a two-week hold or whatever, it's got to be half the rent, and it's got to be a non-refundable fee. Like, I see these people out there. They're doing crazy shit like, oh, hold deposit, and then like 29 days in, the tenant's like, yeah, dude. Uh, if something happened, I don't want to move anymore. And then the landlord's like, okay, here's your money back. What in the fuck is that? Why the fuck would you charge them a deposit in the first place if you're just going to give them their fucking money back? That makes no fucking sense. It's got to be a non-refundable holding deposit or you are going to get burned all over the place and then your dumbass missed that month of rent and the only person you have to blame is yourself. Number five, the last tip I got for you guys to avoid crappy-ass tenants, folks, is make a set of criteria and stick to it, right? I've given you some things that I like to do to avoid asshole tenants, okay? Maybe you have some differing ideas, but whatever you do, set yourself up that criteria and fucking stick to it, right? Oftentimes, people have their criteria, and then they start talking and interacting with these tenants. And that's when the sob stories come out. That's when the heartstrings get pulled on. And I see investor after investor after investor talk themselves into allowing a tenant who's exhibiting clear warning signs that they're going to be a crappy tenant into their building. I don't know, like, why that is, but, like, you guys are just letting your guard down and you're letting these bad folks, these professional tenants, into your unit. Whether it's the single mother who's got a sob story about this, whether it's the felon uh, who had something happen to him 20 years ago and now he's found Jesus and he wants to turn his life around, whether it's the pretty girl who's just flirting with you and you're like, oh, man, this pretty girl loves me. Dude, they're not impressed with the fact that you're a landlord, bro. She's just flirting with you because she wants you to let your guard down because she knows she doesn't meet your qualifications, you fucking asshole. You idiot. You can't let them do that to you guys, right? So if you have a set of written criteria that you will stick to no matter what. When that pretty girl flirts with you, you won't let your guard down and change your criteria. When that single mother gives you her sob story, if it doesn't work, if it doesn't jive with your written criteria, there's nothing you can do. If Mr. X Felon is the holiest motherfucker out there, this dude is fucking preaching the fucking word of Jesus all fucking day and he's the fucking glorious ass person if you have that shit in writing and you can't 
break your own rules, you will not let your guard down and rent to him because no matter how great you think he is today, statistically speaking, he is of a higher probability to cause you to lose money than someone who does meet your criteria. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.